Good morning, YouTubers. T Square here with T Square Talks. Hope everybody's having a great day. Have I got an exciting video planned out for you guys today? Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about why gold and silver is going to, in my opinion, for sure, continue to go up in price, and why I also believe eventually central bank digital currencies are going to roll out. Uh, there is a scenarios that make it to where both can happen. I've read some comments that said, you know, gold and silver will never take off because central bank digital currencies will come out before that happens. And I believe that central bank digital currencies will come out. Um, and I also believe that it will probably happen while gold and silver is taking off. Why? Because the last thing they want is to lose control. And if it, the money was gold and silver, there would be no control in the elite's hands. It would be in our hands. That's why our founding fathers wanted us to essentially have gold and silver as money because they recognized it. it's for the people. Same with the right to bear arms. Same with all of that stuff um, that they put in our constitution. So, But today we're focusing on gold and silver and CBD, central bank digital currencies. Okay, so with that being said, before we get started, please take a quick minute and hit that thumbs up button for me. It really helps me out. If you're not subscribed, take a quick minute and hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts on this video. If there's a question you have that you want answered, leave me a comment. And I do try to answer every question that I get. I try to reply back to almost every comment. If you're not a member and you'd like to really help out the channel, I don't push it that much. I do mention it periodically. It's only $1.99 to join. We are going to be doing a free silver giveaway later in the week for members. Uh, we only have about 30 members right now. And for $1.99 to have a shot at winning a free ounce of silver, it's a pretty good deal. Your odds are pretty good um, and it helps out the channel. And it's super easy. You just hit the join button. All your comments go directly to my phone. And I reply back, though, to pretty much all the comments. It just takes a little time to get to them. But the members' comments, I do reply back to pretty much daily. So as soon as they come in. So with that being said, I had to put that little thing in there. I thank you guys for listening to that. So let's get started, though. Um, so how is gold and silver guaranteed to go up? Now, this is not financial advice, just my opinion. However, I think it's guaranteed to go up because I think the dollar is getting mass produced. As we all know, they continue to print, print, print. And as they print more and more bills, it only makes sense that they're going to have less and less value. And as they have less and less value, they're going to buy you less and less goods. And essentially, that is going to drive all the goods up in the system, including gold and silver. Someone left me a comment today that uh, the dollar will never really collapse because Saudi Arabia is always going to want dollars uh, for oil, even though they are accepting other currencies now. We are the greatest place in the world to live. We've got the greatest military and we've got the greatest money that people can trust. So <laughs> that I, I kind of got a kick out of that, uh, obviously, because if that was all true, Saudi Arabia would still be exclusively taking dollars. They're not exclusively taking dollars. They're taking any currency now. They are still accepting dollars because they do realize that, yeah, the dollar ain't as bad as some other currencies, but we're not going to renew an exclusive contract with you anymore. We'll take whatever. And now here's where I really think it's going to get bad. What's going to happen in October when they have their next BRICS meeting? I think that's going to really change the game because I think if they are a full-fledged member of BRICS by that point, they're probably going to say, you know what? How about we just sell oil exclusively in BRICS currencies and anybody that is a BRICS member can invest in the currency through buying bonds, uh, taking the bonds, giving their money. Their money gets spent on oil, infrastructure, um, the whole BRICS system. Uh, they've pretty well done a great job already copying the SWIFT system. Uh, the SWIFT system is what the U.S. uses in its allies and pretty much most people that deal in dollars use the BRICS banking system. With that being said, by great job, I mean they have done a, a good job. It's, it's against the dollar, obviously, but that is their intentions. I'm looking at it from a chess point of view. It, it's a chess game, and they are taking it one step at a time, and essentially they're kind of playing, I don't know, a, a kid. 
because right now the U.S. is behind the curb on a lot of the stuff that they are doing. They are not being proactive. They're not taking it seriously. I hear videos online that says, oh, they're probably shaking in their shoes. No, they're not. They, they ain't smart enough to really even see what's going on because if they did, they would have already taken countermeasures by increasing the price of gold, maybe making the dollar partially backed by gold, maybe approve some major spending and buying gold um, and that would be continuing to drive the price of gold up. There would be no slowing down. Now, what I do think though is, and they would be raising interest rates. Why? Because if they raise interest rates, then essentially more people will be more apt to want to deposit their money and spend money less on frivolous stuff, which would make the dollar stronger. So with that being said, now we're going to move into the central bank digital currency portion of that. So uh, with the idea that central bank digital currencies will take off before gold and silver will have a chance to erupt, the first thing that I believe will happen for central bank, because there's a lot of politicians that are against it. They don't want it. They don't want central bank digital currencies, even um, the challenger, one of the, I don't know how to say that without saying his, well, I'll just say Trump. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, you know, hot topics right now are funny on YouTube. Um, but Donald Trump right now is against, he said he's against central bank digital currencies. And he said, though, he would do anything to prevent us losing the world reserve status. And it will be a major blow if we lose it. And we are slowly losing it. But here's my thoughts. Once Saudi Arabia says, you know what, you can only buy oil in BRICS currency, how fast do you think the dollar will start to lose ground? You know, here's the thing. There's a lot of dollars being held by hundreds of other countries. And when you think of that, why are they holding dollars? They're holding dollars because they use the dollars to buy oil. However, I don't think for a minute that as soon as Saudi Arabia said we'll accept other currencies, that they are going to go out and just dump their dollars overnight. In fact, they're probably still holding them dollars. Why? Because, you know, some people have this belief that the dollar is super strong and it's a great way to prop up their currency. What do I mean by that? If let's say I go to work every day, I take my money in the form of dollars when I get paid and I hold the dollars. By holding them, I'm hoping the dollars go up in value. And when you look at the DXY chart, to a untrained person that really doesn't know what they're looking at, they look at the DXY chart and they say, oh, the dollar DXY chart's up, the dollar's up. I hear it all the time. Oh, what are you talking about? See, the dollar's at like 105, 106, it's in a good position. Okay, so it looks like it's in a good position, but when you can, that's because it's compared to other currencies. It's not compared to gold and silver. It's not compared to other commodities. That's why the prices of everything we buy is going up because the dollar is going down. However, it's not going down against other currencies around the world because they're all going down equally. So once you understand that portion of it, then you need to look and see. So why would they hold dollars? They're holding dollars because they don't realize that. They realize that the, they think that the dollar is getting stronger because it's getting stronger against their currency but it's not getting stronger against gold. Once the BRICS rolls out and they start only accepting their currency, the BRICS currency, the use of the dollar, I believe, will slowly diminish. And it could happen fast. And then there's a whole other thing called Operation Sandman, which can't be confirmed. It's only been, you know, high up people that have mentioned it. They've leaked it. But I, you know, that's rumors. We'll talk about Operation Sandman in another video if you want to hear about that. Um, but more and more countries are going to stop using the dollar. They're going to shift their dollars back here by buying our goods. And as they drain our goods and give us back our dollars, those dollars are going to be less likely to go back overseas, which means more dollars in our backyard, which means it's going to float around more. And people will feel like they have more money because they will have more fiat dollars, but they will be buying you less. 
Have you ever noticed that when you go to places now, they have more $100 bills in their cash register? It's a habit of mine to always, because I'm so tall, I can look right over the register and see exactly what is in the till. I, I always have a habit of looking, and I notice there's a lot of hundreds in there now. And I've even asked people, man, why you got so many hundreds? Oh, I haven't done a drop, but yeah, we get a lot of hundreds now. That's a common answer that I hear. If everybody is so broke, why are there so many hundreds out there? Because that's all that money floating back into the system. And that's just the paper money. Imagine how many digit, how much in digital money there is out there. So as that happens, you'll see the dollar continue to decline. At a certain point, Congress is going to be like, man, people are getting PO'd. What's going to happen when gas goes up to $10 a gallon? What's going to happen when your food, groceries is doubled in price or tripled in price. Well, people are going to be complaining. They're going to be complaining to their politicians. They're going to be complaining every which way they can. You're going to see it in the news and stuff. And here's the thing. I believe a lot of the news is owned by a handful of people. And therefore, they will be running these stories left and right. And when they do that, eventually, they're going to turn to central bank digital currencies as the answer. And the people that are maybe against it today will be given a wallet, a card, maybe some uh, universal basic income to help get them by, maybe a stimulus check, whatever you want to call it, and you will get the card in the mail. And you can say, I'm not using central bank digital currencies, but let's be honest. When a card shows up in the mail with your name on it and it has $2,000 in central bank digital currencies, free money, even though it ain't really free, you're paying for it in tax dollars, but it's going to seem free. If you don't take it, imagine not taking your stimulus check. I know people that didn't qualify for stimulus checks and they were PO'd. They said everybody else got one. I didn't get one. You know, so imagine you get that card in the mail. You can't honestly tell me that you're not going to use it. Now, I understand you might say, I'm going to do what you're going to do, T. I'm going to use it, which I will. But I'm not putting any more money on it. I'm not converting my cash into central bank digital currencies. I will use the free money, the stimulus money that comes on that central bank digital currency card. But I'm not going to push it anymore. I will use what's given to me, but that will be it. As that happens, though, that rolls out the central bank digital currency system. Now it's out there in the open. Little by little they will offer more things for, to entice you to use it. Maybe you get a check in the mail every month. But you know what? We can put that check on that card. You can have it a couple days early. Instead of waiting till the first of the month, we're going to give it to you on like the 25th, three days early. Oh, you need a debit card? You can now use these as your debit card. Your central bank digital currency card can be used as a debit card. Um, you can use it for anything you buy. See, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, you know, people will be upset. They're going to say, oh, they're tracking everything you buy. And they are. Don't think for a minute they're not. But little by little, people will overlook it. I mean, let's be honest. You buy something on a credit card, they're tracking it now if they want to. You know, so little by little, they will entice you with extra things. Your tax return Hey, you can have it within a week if you have it put on your central bank digital currency card. More and more uses will pop up for that card. And you can pay your taxes through it. You can, all the different perks that they can roll out, people will actually start to accept it. Little by little, more people will use it. And once it's out there, that's it. It just will continue to grow in popularity. There will be a handful of holdouts like there has been on other programs. I mean, you take a look at Social Security. There were people that thought Social Security was the mark of the beast and they refused the Social Security number. I actually knew one person that he refused. He wrote them a letter as soon as he turned 18 and declined his Social Security number. And they accepted that. I didn't even know you could do that. However, he does not pay into the tax system. He does not, uh, what was some of the, per he, there was so many different things, but he don't get any kind of, re I think he might pay into the tax system, but he don't get like social security. He don't get, he don't pay into social security. That's what it was. Um, but he don't, he ain't eligible for it either. 
So as that happens, though, more and more people will start to use central bank digital currencies. Well, in the meanwhile, there's going to be a lot of holdouts that are going to be buying up gold and silver. And they're going to see firsthand central bank digital currencies are taking off now. At that point, more and more people are going to want central bank that more and more people are going to want central bank digital currencies. And then the holdouts are going to want to put more money into gold and silver. Now, what will happen in the long term, way, way down the road, probably after I'm gone and most of us are gone, they'll find a way to continue to manipulate the price of precious metals down. However, they could end up backing the, because when the dollar fails, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to trust banks. I mean, it's not like we trust them now, but they're not going to trust government. It's not like a lot of people trust them now anyway, either though. And with that being said, they're going to want gold and silver. So there's a possibility that when they originally roll out central bank digital currencies, they could say, you know what, we realize now that we need to have a gold-backed central bank digital currency. We're going to back it to gold. We're going to back it to silver. And that's it. Look back in history. So far, we've had four major instances where the dollar continued to get printed, gold got left behind. And then all of a sudden, the price of gold is all of a sudden pretty much instantly revalued to equal the amount of cash that's in the system. Now, sometimes instantly revalued overnight, and in some cases, revalued in terms of the bull run to $400 or the bull run to $2,000 or the soon that we haven't seen yet, but we've started seeing the gold bull run to $8,000. And yes, I said that. I picture that gold could go to $8,000 because if the currency was valued in gold today, that would put us at something like eight to $10,000, I think. Uh, It's not every currency, you know? So, I mean, I'm only looking at what we have out there, you know? So it's easy to predict those numbers. And I know some people will tell you that. Well, think about that for a minute. If that happens and silver goes back to a 10 to 1 ratio, well, then that's $800 silver. And I don't entirely know if we will see it to that extreme, but silver is getting used up more heavily. And for that reason, I think silver is going to continue to go up too. Now, like I tell people, what's more likely? Gold at 2400 we'll say, going to 48 or silver that's at a measly... $29 going to $58. I think it's more likely that silver will double. And that's why I'm so much more into silver than gold. However, I recognize gold is universal. People love gold. Uh, even the people, there are people out there that like gold and don't like silver. And I see that in the comments too. And if you're really honest with yourself, you'll know there's a lot of people that do. However, I don't think the growth potential on the up movement is as great as we're going to see with silver. And the reason that I think that is, you look at gold, gold's pretty much at an all-time high. I mean, we're not quite there, but we hit the all-time high less than 60 days ago. And it's doing a good job hovering in that upper region. Even with the beatdowns, it's not really been beat down that much. So you've got gold really close to its all-time high. And what is silver at? Like I said, silver's at a measly $29. And I really think it's going to go to $28 and change by the end of next week at some point. It will be quick. It may not hold its position. It will plunge. And then it will instantly come back to where it was. And then next month, I think we're going to see back up to $32, $33. I think we will take out the 11-year high next month for sure. I would not be surprised to see $35 silver by the end of next month. Um, and, and I think it looks really good. So, you know, I'd rather have the investment that is undervalued. Now, f- some people out there are going to say, you know, that's crazy. Silver's at an 11-year high and you would put money into it now. I would. Because if you were to pick and choose the common thing, oh, I bought silver in 1980 and I lost money. Okay, let's look at that in a different perspective. 1980... Silver was $49, 2011, we had $50, whatever. I mean, you know, look at it today. I mean, 
It's nothing compared to that. Everything else has gone up in value except for silver. Therefore, silver is severely manipulated. It's severely undervalued. It's a no-brainer to buy into it. And worrying about central bank current digital currencies is not going to phase me. I, I'm not buying it because I don't want that to roll out. It's going to roll out if it's going to roll out. It ain't, we can't do anything about it. So with that being said, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you leave me a comment because I love reading them. And hit that thumbs up and let me know what you guys think. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.